One of the biggest mistakes I see people making when they're building apps with Langchain and with large language models is not controlling the output of the model and not setting up the model to put something in a way that's going to be useful to what you actually want to use. So while this is not one of the sexy sort of topics of large language models, I think it's one of the crucial mistakes is that I see time and time again in people's projects, they're not setting up their prompts in a way to get things out in a way that can be useful for them. So Langchain has a whole set of tools for doing exactly this. Uh, and these are called the output passes. So let's get started and go through uh, some of these. So here you can see I'm starting off. I'm going to be using the ChatGPT Turbo API here. And we're just setting up a nice simple prompt and a simple task for the model to do. So we're asking it, okay, you're a master branding consultant who specializes in naming brands. I'm going to give you a description and I want you to come up with some brand names for me. So this is kind of like, you know, it's a very simple sort of task. So we've got our template string there. You can see our input is going to be the brand description. And we also wanted to basically give back the brand name. And then also we're going to push it a little bit and ask it to basically estimate between one to 10, how likely it is to succeed with this brand name here. All right. So we've basically got that up because we're using the chat language model uh, rather than the normal language model. So remember the chat language model, we have a system a template, we have then human and then AI, then human and AI, even though we're not doing a chat here, we can still use this model. So we're basically setting up the chat prompt template from a template string. And I'm going to basically just pass this in. And you can see that if I want, want to try formatting this, I pass in just my brand description. And the first brand we're going to ask it for is a cool, hip, new sneaker brand aimed at rich kids. So the branding will actually re return back a set of messages. So we've got this branding messages here. You can see here we've got this human message. So we're actually skipping the, the system message in this case, which is fine. And is actually often preferable for the Turbo API. So while the GPT-4 API responds to the system message, uh, a lot more. The Turbo API often doesn't respond as well to the actual system message because it wasn't trained for that. All right, so you can see here now we've basically got our response back and we've run it through the language model and this is the output that we get. We're going to get the brand name that it's suggesting is Lux Kicks. It's giving a score 8 out of 10, which is what I asked for. It's also giving the reason for this. So it's giving the name is catchy and memorable and as it effectively conveys the brand's target audience and positioning. So that's not what I wanted. It's not what I asked for at the start, but it actually is kind of useful. So I'm going to keep that as well. So the problem is though, if I take this put now that it's just generated and I want to use this in an app. So let's say I'm building, you know, the master branding name app, whatever. Really, if I want to show this on a screen, I don't just want to show it like this. I perhaps want to put the, the name in a fancy font. Or maybe I want to show the score as some sort of graph or something. If it's going to give me some reasoning, maybe I want to show that different in a different place on the screen. So to do that, really, I need this in some kind of data format. Now, I could try and write a, a function that you know gets this out. But that's not ideal. Really, we want the language model to do that heavy lifting for us. So the next sort of way we could do this is to basically use a prompt, right? So you can see now I've got the exact same thing, but I'm saying, okay, format the output as JSON with the following keys. So JSON is going to return back something we can convert to a dictionary. And we're going to have the key being brand name, likelihood of success, and then reasoning there. So we run that through and we can see, sure enough, now it's giving us, so we've gone through, done the, the same as before. Now it's giving us what looks like kind of JSON. The challenge with this though, is that this is still a string. So I, I could, you know, I could run it through as a JSON string and convert it. And it would probably work for this one looking at it. But sometimes you're going to find that the formatting is not you know, it's just slightly off. It, it might be done in a way that's not going to format nicely. And this is where output passes come in. 
So these basically con constitute a few different things. So if we look at this first one is the structured output pass. So this is kind of what we want. We want something like this. And that's kind of what we got back as a string before, but we really want it now. We want to be able to convert it. We want to be able to use it in a program and stuff like that. So an output parser requires a number of different things. It requires that we define in some way what it is that we want out. And that's going to be used by the output parser to construct a sort of end part to the prompt, which will tell it what formatting we want our put to be. So if we come down and look here, an example of this is where we're going to look at the structured output parser. So this is a very sort of simple example. I'm going to go through a few different examples and I'll show you some of the ones that I use generally in production. So, okay, here we've basically got a response schema with a brand name. Here we've got the, the I'm basically saying, okay, this is going to be, I want the brand name, I give it a little description of what this will be. And these are going to be passed in to the actual model. So I define the brand, the likelihood of success, the reasoning schema, and then we put all of these together as we go through this. So now I've got my output parser and I'm going to basically construct it from this response schema that I've just created above there. And now when I basically get my format instructions, these are going to be passed into the prompt and they're being generated from this output parser. So you see, when I print this out, you can see here, I've now got it saying that the output should be markdown code snippet formatted in the following schema, including the leading and trailing ticks that it's got there and, and JSONs. This would come out something like this. So it would be JSON the brand name and it's going to be an output with where this is the name of the brand the likelihood of success etc as we go through this now this is pretty good right so this is basically going to get it into a format where we can then actually start to pass it with the second part of the output parser which is the actual passing part where it's going to take the output and it's going to convert it into a format that we can use so, okay, we've got our same template string there. You see, the only change we add in now is that we add in this formatting instructions at the end. And now when we're constructing this, we basically say, right, we're going to format this and we pass in the brand description, but we're also going to pass in the format instructions. So that when we look at these, these messages, we can see that in here is this format instruction being passed into the prompt as well. So if we print that and we look at it, we can see now our prompt is basically what we had before. It's got our description that we want in there. And it's now got the output should be markdown code and the, the formatting that it should be there. So it's conforming the model to much more of a structure. Now you will find, especially with the bigger models, like your GPT-3 models, your GPT-4 models, that they respond to structure often a lot more than just leaving things to be vague by telling them specifically what you want, not always, but usually you will get something in that style out. So you can see that, okay, I basically take that through. And now when I run this through, I've basically got, what, what have I got out? I've got the AI message back and the content is this format with this JSON where it's basically the brand name. So this is all done in Markdown. And now I can basically put that in the output parser. So if I take that and I put it into the output parser, put response.content. Now the output parser knows, because this is the output parser we defined before, it knows what format to be expecting and how to pass that in a way to get the right thing. And you can see, sure enough, we've basically got that out. And when we look at this, we can see that, okay, not only have we got it out, but when we look at the type, it's now a dictionary, right? So it's converted it from being just this string that came out into now a dictionary that we can use in an... So you'll see that here, if we go in and we basically, now I say responses dict and just look at brand name, I can get brand name. If I wanted to look at likelihood of success, I'll get that out. So this is now got it in a, a good format that we can use. 
The, the only one of the key issues though here with this is this eight is a string. So for example, if we wanted in our app to basically say, oh, just show me the brands that were greater than a seven chance of being success, we're going to have to convert this to an integer at some point. So that's something to keep in mind. And you'll see, I'll show you with a different way how we can actually get this to be an integer out of the model. All right. So the next sort of thing that you should be thinking is how do I put this in a chain? Before we're just doing it with primitives, now we want to put this into a chain. So I'm basically saying, okay, I need a chat prompt template. I need the messages. I need to build this from our template string that we had up there before. The input variables are going to be the brand description. And then the partial variables are going to be the formatting instructions that we've got here. And we've got now an output parser that we're going to put into the chain. So the output parser that we had before, right? So he here is where we are adding this output parser to the prompt template for use in the chain. And to use it, you'll see that you need to sort of use the chain in a special way as we go through. So we've got our prompt message out. We format this out. We've got the same as before. Now we're, this is all coming out from our chain that we've got here. That's all, sorry, this is getting ready for the chain. Here we're actually building the chain. And so we're passing in our large language model, we're passing in the prompt. And now normally we would do chain.predict and we would just get the, the output would be a string that we would get back. If we do chain.predict and pass, now it will do all of what we were doing manually up there for us automatically. So now you can see we've got this response back. If I look at the type of the response, it's a dictionary already. And if I look at the response, you can see, okay, it's generated the same thing out, Lux kicks, likelihood of success. Now, the, as, as I said earlier on, the, you know, the challenge with this though, is we're still getting, when we look at this likelihood of success, this is still a string that, that we're getting here. So we, we will address that, all right? I'll come back to that. Now we've, you've learned sort of one output parser. There are actually a variety of different output parsers that Langchain has. The next one, and to be honest, this one I don't use that much, and you'll see why, you know, as I go further on. But one of the ones that you can get is if you want something as a list. So this is basically a comma separated list output parser. So what this will do is it's basically now saying, okay, we've got the brand name. Give me four possible marketing slogans for the brand name. And I, of course, I need to pass in the format instructions as well. So I've set up the format instructions for this new output parser, which is the comma separated list output parser. We run through that. We've got our prompt the same as before. We run it through our language model. Again, I'm just sticking to the same language model for this. We've got our prompt. We basically pass in the brand name. So I'm taking the brand name from that dictionary that we generated before. So we could actually turn this into a chain of where we just put in a description and it goes through and does all of these things step by step. But we've got this here where we're then basically passing in our messages for the prompt and we pass that in. So you can see that what got added to this. So we've got the give me the four possible marketing slogans, right? That's what we had. It then put in the Lux kicks that got generated earlier. And then the format instructions for this output parser is your response should be a list of comma separated values, e.g. foo, bar, baz. We then basically take that out. And you can see the actual output that came out as a string like this. And we can see, sure enough, this is a string, but they are separated by commas. If we put that into the output parser. Now we get a Python list out here. Now, it, it's maybe not so nice in the way that it's got the quotes and stuff like that. You, we could pass some of those out later on once they're in a list here. But that's a basic one for doing a list. The one that I use the most is the one that I'm going to show you next. And this is the Pydantic output parser. So if you've ever used something like Flask, you've probably encountered Pydantic. It's basically a way to define classes of models of different data points there. You can think about this as being like, okay, I want to instantiate a class for each output that I get back from the large language model. The output must conform to this class. So here I'm basically just bringing in some things to set it up. I'm going to make a class called brand info in this case. 
I'm going to say that brand info, you're going to have a string. It's going to be a field. It's going to be a description. This is the name of the brand. So this is nothing different than what I put up here. We're just now putting it in a different format here. But the other thing that is different is you'll notice the likelihood of success I've now got as an integer here rather than as a string. I'm saying that this is, should be an integer score between one and 10. All right, just to make sure that it's not badly formatted, I can actually write some validators for this. So for example, if one of the things here was supposed to be a question, then I could actually you know, format this to basically look for a question mark at the end. In this case, this is supposed to be an integer. So I want to check that this is not above, it's not going to be greater than 10 because my score has to be one to 10 for this. And if it is, it's going to send back an error that it was a badly formed score. So this is what, what, what we're calling the pedantic output parser here. And the whole idea is it's using this class here. So you can see here that I've basically got, I'm setting it up by instantiating this with this particular class that I've made here. So now it will use that class to determine how to write the format instructions for the prompt as we go through. So you can see now I've got my, back to my sort of original template string. We're passing in the brand description, we're passing in format instructions. Now, when I basically go through this, you'll see now with the uh, instructions that I'm making for the prompt, it's not only giving this out, but it's also giving us the whole, the schema of what that should be like. So if we scroll down, so if we look at this in full, we can see that, okay, the output, the formatting instructions for this are the output should be formatted as JSON instance that conforms to the JSON schema below. As an example of schema, it's got like an in-context learning example there. And then it shows what is, you know, properly formatted, what is not properly formatted. So what's not well formatted. And it's got, here is an output schema. And then it shows like what we want, the properties to be brand name, title, you know, brand name description. I suppose we got those reasoning and it's got the, the score going on here. So this tends to get a much better result out than just even just using a structured output pass right, by passing this in as a actual class here. So if I basically take this out now, you can see that I run this thing through the language model. I get my content back. Of course, the content back is going to be the string at the start, but, and this it is a string at this point, right? But it runs it through the pedantic user and converts it. And, and you can see now we're getting back this class. We know that it's a class because if we do the type, we can see we've got a class of brand info. So we've got this brand info. And it's basically got the, the brand name the reasoning, and th then it's got a uh, you know, likelihood of success there. And if we look at this, we go to our likelihood of success, that's coming out as eight. But when we look at this, if we type that, we can see it's actually an integer now. So we don't need to do any more conversion. It's basically put it in the right format for what we want for this going uh, forward. All right. So this is the one that I suggest you use the most for doing puts and stuff like that, because it just gets things from the language model that you can then use in programs very easily. Even if you were doing a chatbot, you could have this coming out as the text response or something like that. And you just take that and display that on the screen. All right. Next up, we've got two other parsers that I want to show you. There are some other ones that I'm not including in this, like an enum one. But honestly, I find you use the pedantic one by far the most. The other two, though, are kind of interesting because they're for the sort of cases of what happens if it gets it wrong. And so the first one is basically output fixing parser. So this is taken from the example on the Langchain website. So again, they're using Pydantic. So you can see that they've got a class being an actor model here. And you're going to basically pass in an actor's name and you're going to get back a filmography or something like that. So we've got here the pedantic output parser where we're passing in actor. And let's say we ran this and we got a misformatted one back. So why is this misformatted? It looks like it's a pretty decent JSON. When we run it through the parser though, we get the error back that, oh, okay, it was expecting the property name enclosed in double quotes and this is not double quotes. All right, we can just now take that output 
And we can use the language model to actually fix this up. So if we, we see here, we're basically just making a new chain from an LLM. We're put, passing in the parser that we already generated and we're passing in the language model. It's going to generate a new parser out. We then take that new parser and we pass the misformatted result that supposedly came back from our LLM. And we'll see that now it's formatted. Now it's going to look like it's got the same things, but now we've actually got it as a class. So it's actually gone through. So here you are passing in the Pydantic class that you generated, which was actor and as a Pydantic output parser. So it's taken that and it's basically fixed it up. So what did it actually do? Let's have a look at what it actually did. It's pretty simple what it actually did here is that it basically made a new prompt where it said, right, the instructions, and it gave the, the original instructions that were passed in for the first time. And then it gave him the completion of what the, the language model originally generated out. And then it gave him the error that it got based on that it wasn't be able to pass it. And then it just was basically saying, you know, above the completion did not satisfy the constraints given in the instructions. This was the error we got back. Please try again. Please only respond with an answer that satisfies the constraints laid out in the instructions. So this is a way that it can self fix up to do that. So that's just done by just looking at you know, the output. The second uh, way of doing this is a sort of just a straight up retry for this. So if the fixing one is not working and trying to reformat what you originally got out was just not that good, you're then better to just do a retry. And that's what's going on here is that basically we get a bad response back. It looks at the bad response basically realizes that, okay, this wasn't that good. He so does the output passing. It still doesn't get you know, a great response back. So now it basically does a retry with the parser. And then basically there's a good chance that you will get something back. Remember, usually the put from these, often you're going to be having a stochastic output where each time it's going to be slightly different. So the previous one, the reason why we didn't get we weren't asking it to just make a new one. We were asking it to fix up the old one. So if it can't fix up the old one, well, then we're better to just fall back and basically retry, retry with what we had going on in here. Anyway, so this is output passes. It's definitely not one of the sexy parts of using large language models, but it is one of the crucial parts that you need for generating outputs from language models that you can actually use in programs and get things working. As always, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you found this useful, please click like and subscribe. I'm starting to put up the code in GitHub, so look out for the links in that in the comments below. I will talk to you next time. Bye for now.